I think they look excellent inside of desktops, but going into laptops, we're going to have some issues. That's right, and I'd like to talk about three of them today. Wattages key. Inside of laptops, we can only handle so much due to the constraints of the size and design of these laptop chassis. But in the Pascal 10 series, we were getting really close when it came to laptop versus desktop performance. And the wattage differential between a 1080 at 30 watts, a 1070 at 35 watts, and a 1060 at 40 watts, this was very close. This does not include the few and far between instances where we could get more than 150 watts out of a Clevo based chassis, nor does this include any of the max q variants which definitely skew these numbers in favor of the desktop but just know that they do exist i'm aware you're aware let's proceed touring 20 series nvidia gpu the wattage got bumped up now we have a 65 watt differential between the desktop and laptop 150 watt variant again not including any max q or muscle books from you know alienware clevo and msi the 2070 60 watt variant 175 watts in the desktop, 115 watts in the laptop. Pretty nice performance here, but it paled in comparison to the desktop part, and the desktop 2060 at 160 watts, laptops at 90 watts, again, not including a 65 watt max Q, which is gonna make this number look even worse. And furthermore, the few and far between 115 watt variants of the 2060 inside of laptops that I have been highly recommending, that is a great laptop GPU. Now, when it comes to what we're looking at today and why this video exists, the Emperor 30 series, 3080, 320 watts. Man, if you're a desktop user, who cares? The performance that this is bringing is spectacular, but you're gonna have to remove more than half of the wattage, 170 watts to get us into the 150 watt envelope that we're gonna need for some of these seven to 10 pound muscle books. And if you wanna bring max Q to the table and say 90 watt max Q, and now you're gonna have to lop off down to what, a third wattage compared to a 320 watt variant? More than that, we're, we're gonna be almost down to a quarter of the wattage. Expect performance of a 3080 Max-Q to be half of a desktop variant in gaming. Benchmarks aside, those tend to lie to you. A 3070, 220 watts, that's more than the previous 2080. Rip off 105 watts to get that down to 115 watts inside of our laptops. This is a big kick in the pills, and I want you to be aware, but we're not done. We are CPU bottlenecked at 1080p. However, 1080p is the ideal resolution for gaming laptops based on pixel density and viewing distance. And as an example, we are gonna feature this 2080 Super, and I'm gonna show you what this means as far as performance and that CPU resolution bottleneck. Check this out. Take a look at this 150 watt 2080 Super. I mean, this is the closest thing I've got that can resemble anything close to what a 3070 or 3080 could potentially give us inside of a laptop. And we are nowhere near getting 99% GPU utilization here. We are leaving so much performance left on the table. And this is no doubt because the CPU is not fast enough, the memory is not fast enough, the resolution is not high enough. And these are just limitations that we are currently bottlenecked with. There's nothing we can do about it. Sure, we can up the resolution with our 4K panels. Still not ideal for laptops and gaming laptops. And now we are basically just hitting the reset button on the frame rate. And yes, we can use, you know, ray tracing to help saturate that GPU a little bit more, but we are talking few and far between niche situations here. Under most circumstances across most games out there, this is the scenario that you're going to be forced with. You're on a laptop, you're at 1080p, you're getting the high refresh rate or attempting to get that with 144 hertz, 240 hertz, 300 hertz, and we're leaving so much performance left on the table and there's nothing we can do about it. Okay, the desktop GPU, the laptop GPU, exact same chip minus the TDP. So a video BIOS was flashed to the laptop variant to limit the wattage and therefore it does not overheat and it can fit inside of these laptops properly thermally. As a result, you are paying a lot of money for less performance. How this works is that NVIDIA charges X amount for their GPU. 
The consumer has to pay for that, right? Well, the manufacturer who makes these laptops for us, our favorite manufacturers, they have to pay for it also. The 2080 cost many manufacturers around $350 more than it did over a 2070. So they have to forward that over to us. But because all the wattage constraints inside of laptops, everything is shrunk down from a performance tier standpoint, regardless, we are still paying big boy money for these parts because in Nvidia's eyes, it's still a 2080 regardless, okay? So as a result, the price to performance on desktops, I am digging where the 3000 series is, at least for the 70 and 80 series so far, and I see no reason why I wouldn't for 60 series on down. But when it comes to laptops, this has always been a big problem, and it's more so of one now because of the higher wattage that 3000 series is bringing to us we are still limited on laptops but we are still going to have to pay big bucks for these cards do you see what i'm saying bottom line wait for 3000 series laptop gpus if you demand the best ray tracing experience that you can get out of your gaming laptop because I think that's going to be about the best solution you're going to see to fully saturate that GPU as far as software is concerned. Maybe CUDA core, that kind of level of acceleration outside of gaming. If you're into that and you need that, then definitely wait for the laptop 3000 series as well. But when it comes to raw frame rate performance, based on everything that I know as a tech enthusiast and what I was able to hopefully talk about and showcase in today's video, the 3070 and the 3080 are gonna cost the consumer a lot of money inside of laptops, but they're just not gonna be able to deliver the kind of performance anywhere close to the desktop variant. And as a result, it still makes the 2060, the 2070, and the 2080 look good in my eyes. And for the record, this same thing happened December 2018, early 2019, when we were still using Pascal and everybody wanted to know what it would be like to use the 20 series touring laptops and should they wait. And my advice was the same then as it is now, but now it's just more amplified because of that wattage neutering that we see from 3000 desktops into laptops. All right, folks, that's going to do it. That's my unique perspective on everything regarding the 3070 and 3080 inside of laptops based on what we know as of today. I'm Bob Voltrades, and I hope to see you in the next video.